Today's lesson will be from chapter nine, problem 6B. You should be able to see chapter nine, problem 6B. We're gonna be completing some journal entries in in this problem that have to do with sales and notes receivable transactions. The following were selected from among the transactions completed during the year by the Danex company, an appliance wholesale company. On January 21st, we sold merchandise on account to the Black Tie Company, $28,000. The cost of the merchandise sold was $16,800. This journal entry is done exactly like you have done the journal entries before for sales transactions. We are assuming that we're using a perpetual inventory system. So there will be two journal entries for the January 21st transaction. The first journal entries to record that there was a sale on account to Black Tie Company. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our journal and we're going to debit accounts receivable, the black tie company for $28,000 because our accounts receivable, which is an asset has increased in this transaction because we're selling merchandise to the black tie, uh, to the black tie company we're going to credit our sales, which is a revenue account for 28,000. The cost of the merchandise sold was 16,800. So we will debit our expense account called cost of merchandise sold, and we would credit our asset account merchandise inventory to reflect that the merchandise inventory has left the store and is off the shelf. So uh, the amount was 16,800. Again, these first two journal entries from the January 21st transaction should be a review for you. On March the 18th, we accepted a 60 day 6% note for 28,000 from the black tie company on account. All right. so. Originally on January 21st, we made a sale to the black tie company. What's happened on March the 18th is it was black ties time to pay, but they did not. So what they did, black tie probably came to us and said, hey, well, I can't pay you what I owe you right now. Could you give me a little bit more time? And so as a company, you want to try to collect your, your money and if a customer comes to you and says they can't pay you, you probably will allow them some more time for you to be able, for them to be able to pay you. Um, and so therefore we are creating a note receivable for this customer that will credit their accounts receivable. So a notes receivable is an asset account. All receivables, by the way, are asset accounts. Notes receivable could be for a long period of time and that would make it a um, type of investing activity. Uh, but in this case, it's probably gonna be a shorter period of time. And the reason I can tell this is, is for 60 days, which is less than a year. So this would be considered a short-term asset, which would be a current asset. Notes receivable would be a current asset. Notes receivable is going up because we've accepted a note from the customer in exchange for their accounts receivable. So accounts receivable is decreasing. To decrease accounts receivable, which is an asset, you would credit to increase the note receivable, which is an asset, you would debit it. So sometimes customers will not be able to pay you the amount of the accounts receivable on its due date. 
And so if they contact you and ask for a little bit more time, you can establish a notes receivable for them. The difference between a notes receivable and accounts receivable is that a note receivable will carry interest. The interest rate is 6% for this particular transaction on March the 8th. That's an annual interest rate. And we're going to be calculating simple interest on the future uh, in a future transaction. I believe it's the one that's coming up next. And I'll show you how to calculate simple interest there. What you need to know about the March 18th transaction is that you're going to debit note receivable because the assets are increasing. You're going to credit your accounts receivable, which means your assets are decreasing. So it's sort of like a wash transaction, but you're just giving them a little bit longer time to pay, but you're going to charge them some interest for a not pay for the customer not paying you on time. On May the 17th, we received from the black tie company the amount that was due on the note of March 18th. So what we're talking about here is we are receiving the money that was due from this note. And so there's going to be interest on this note. And I'm going to show you how we calculate interest. First of all, our note receivable is going to be credited for the amount that you established it for. Remember in the transaction before we established that note receivable at $28,000. So our notes receivable is definitely going to be decreasing here when the customer pays us the amount that they owe us. So notes receivable is going down. That's why it's credited. Interest revenue is a new account that they're introducing to you in this chapter. Because it's revenue, it's going to increase on the credit side like all revenue accounts do. Our interest revenue is increasing because we've earned interest for 60 days. To calculate simple interest, we take the face amount or the principal of the note, which is $28,000. We'll multiply it by its annual interest rate which was 6%, and that was given in the transaction on March 18th. Right here is where the 6% comes from. So <clears throat> on May the 17th, when we are being paid back the amount of money that was owed to us, but we're also going to get, in addition to that money, some interest. To figure the interest, we use simple interest. The principal is 28,000 times the annual interest rate is 6%. Then we're gonna multiply that by 60 days, which is the term of the note. And we're gonna divide it by 360 days. In this textbook, they use 360 days as an annual amount of days to calculate interest. Now, I know that annually we have 365 days, and some textbooks do use 365, but for some reason or another, they chose to use 360. I think they told you it's easier to calculate that way, um, but sometimes that causes students confusion. But this is a number of days in the year, and then I also have heard um, that there was um, uh, some kind of rule a long time ago where there were, at one time, there were like uh, five holidays, major holidays, and so that's why they use 360. But I think your textbook states that they use it because they think it'll make it easier on your calculations. But 60 is the term that's the length of the note that you uh, allowed this customer, the time that you allowed this customer to have this note outstanding. And then 360 is showing that this is a, a, a annual interest that we're calculating. Um, so 
28,000 times 6% annual interest rate times 60 days, the term of the note divided by 360 will give you $280. So $280 is the interest revenue that we are going to be receiving in this transaction. It's revenue to us, so we have to credit it to increase the revenue account. What the company is going to receive in cash is what we refer to as the maturity value of this note. The maturity value of the note is the face of the note which in this case is 28,000 plus the interest that we've earned off of this note. So 28,000 plus 280 is the maturity value of this note. We are receiving cash for the note, the payment of the note and the interest with that. So note, the face amount of the note, which is 28,000 plus 280, gives you the maturity value of the note, which is the cash that we are receiving from that customer. So on June the 15th, we made another sale. We sold on account to the Pioneer Company $17,700. The cost of the merchandise sold was 10,600. And that's very similar to the first transaction that we did. You will debit your accounts receivable, credit your sales for 17,700. That was a given sales amount. And then you'll update your merchandise inventory by debiting the cost of merchandise sold and crediting merchandise inventory for the given amount. So we can move on, I think, because those are just review entries. Let's go on to June 21st and see what's happened on June 21st. On June 21st, we loaned $18,000 cash to J.R. Stutz, receiving a 30-day 8% note. So we loaned $18,000 cash to J.R. Stutz. And so we made him sign a note with interest saying he would pay us this $18,000 back. On June 21st, we would debit our note receivable for the face amount of the note, which is $18,000 and we will credit our interest revenue for the, uh, excuse me, not interest revenue, but we'll credit our cash for the amount of cash that we loan to JR Stutz. So we simply debit cash and credit, excuse me, we will credit our cash and we will debit our notes receivable. Notes receivable is an asset account. It's going up. We are loaning this person some money. We gave them some cash. And so our cash is decreasing. To decrease cash, which is an asset, you would credit. On June 25th, we received from the Pioneer Company the amount that was due on the invoice of June the 15th. All right, so we look back at June 15th. This is where we set up an account receivable. There was no note here, so there was no interest. We're just receiving the amount that was due from the Pioneer Company. So we're going to debit our cash and credit our accounts receivable for 17,700. That was a, the original amount uh, that the accounts receivable was debited for. So on June 25th, we debit cash for 17,700 and we would reduce our accounts receivable by 17,700.
on July 21st, we received the interest that was due from J.R. Stutz and a new 60-day 9% note as renewal of the loan on June 21st. So on June 21st, when we loaned this money to J.R. Stutz, we established a notes receivable for 30 days at 8% interest. And so 30 days later, which would be July 21st, that note receivable is due. But this person that we loaned the money to can't pay us the full amount that they owe us. So they did say, well, I'll just go ahead and pay you the interest off of the note, but we give me a longer time to pay. And this company said, yes. So they renewed the original note at a new interest rate. So there's really two transactions that are involved here. One is that we are receiving the cash interest and then the other is that we are taking one note off of the books and putting a new one on the books so that the person can have an extended time to pay the original amount of the note. Here's where I've got the transaction recorded. I class like to do it in two separate entries, but for some reason or another in Cengage, they wanted to combine it all together, which I think is a little bit more confusing. So what I'm gonna tell you is the first journal entry, I would receive in the interest that was paid up front by J.R. Stutz. They paid this company the interest off of the first note. The face amount of the note, the first note is 18,000. The annual interest was 8% and the time that they had to pay the note was 30 days. So we've really earned interest revenue for 30 days here and we've collected the interest from J.R. Stutz. So our cash will be debited for 120 and our interest revenue will be credited for 120. That's one journal entry. The second journal entry says, we have to put a new note on at the face amount of 18,000, but we're gonna charge 9% interest and we're gonna give them 60 days to pay it within. So this is the new note. And so I'm gonna put out here to the side that this is the new one because sometimes it um, gets confusing there. That's your new note. And this is the one that has the new 9% interest on it. You might wanna put that out to the side too. Just so you'll know what we're doing here. And then the old note, we're getting rid of the old note. We're canceling it out. And the old note was for 8% um, interest. And they paid us the 8% interest. So the uh, old note is just credited for its face value, which was originally 18,000. So this transaction here is connected to this transaction right here, where we debited the note receivable for 18,000 on June 21st. We're crediting that note on July 21st because we're getting rid of the old note. The old note's going away. The new note is going on the books. So J.R. Stutt still owes 18,000, but he's gonna owe an additional amount of interest when he does pay the amount of the note. If he does pay the amount of the note, we may have to write it off. So let's look at the next uh, transaction and see what happened here. On September the 19th, it says we received from J.R. Stutz the amount that was due on her note of July 21st. Remember it was the new note at 9% for 60 days. 
and J.R. Stutz is finally paying us for that. So we're going to record some interest as revenue off of that new note that we created on July 21st. The face amount of the note was 18,000. The interest rate was 9% and it was for 60 days was the term of the note divided by 365 days in the year. That's how we get $270 in interest. The interest would be added back to the face of the note. Notice notes receivable is credited for the 18,000 because this note right here is going away. And the two of these together is what we call the maturity value. That's the cash that we are receiving for 18,270. The principal of the note plus the interest is the maturity value. And that's the cash that we are receiving off of this note. On the next transaction, which is September the 22nd, we sold merchandise on account to Wyckoff Company. The cost of merchandise sold was 12,000. This is just like the entries that you've done before for sale. You debit accounts receivable, the Wyckoff Company and credit sales, and then you would debit the cost of merchandise sold and credit Merchandise inventory for 12,000. So we're on this transaction right here. The first transaction is to record the sale. The second one is to update the merchandise inventory. Now we're on October the 14th. We have accepted a 30 day 6% note for 20,000 from Wyckoff Company on account. So on October 22nd, we sold them some, some merchandise on account. On the due date, which was October the 14th, they accepted a 30 day 6% note from Wyckoff Company as to apply to that uh, account receivable. So they did not pay us the amount they owed us. So what we have to do is we have to establish an account receivable, excuse me, we have to establish a notes receivable on our books in exchange for the accounts receivable. So we debit notes receivable for 20,000. This notes receivable is gonna carry interest on it. We've given Wyckoff a little bit longer to pay off what they owed us, but we're gonna charge them some interest for that. The accounts receivable to Wyckoff Company is credited because this accounts receivable is going away. Now on November the 13th, the same Wyckoff Company that we have established a note for is dishonoring the note that was dated October 14th. What dishonored means is they're not gonna pay you. So what we, or they haven't paid by the due date. So what we have had to do is to take that note that was established on October the 14th off of our books and reestablish an accounts receivable in exchange for that note we put the accounts receivable back on the books so that we can try to collect from that customer the full amount that is due from that note. Because this Wyckoff person owes us 30 days in interest, the accounts receivable will go back on the books at the maturity value of the note. Remember the maturity value is the principal of the note plus the interest. We're taking the notes receivable off for what it was originally established for. Right here was the original note. We're taking it off of our books because this company has dishonored the note. We're gonna show on our books that we have earned 
30 days of interest because from October 14th to November 13th is 30 days. That interest was at 6% annual interest. So 20,000 times 6% times 30 days that was in the original note up here that was dishonored divided by 360 days means that this company, Wyckoff, owes us a grand total of 20,100. We reestablished it as an account receivable. We're gonna to try to collect from the Wyckoff company, but if we cannot collect from them, then we will write it off similar to one of the write-off entries that we did in the last problem that we illustrated. So we put in the, note, the uh, account back on the books, we're taking the note off of the books and we're charging them some interest. In addition to that interest, on December the 28th, it says that we received Wyckoff Company, from Wyckoff Company, the amount owed on the dishonored note plus interest for 45 days at 8% that was computed on the maturity value of the note. So in this case, we finally are receiving payment from the Wyckoff Company the accounts receivable that we established on November the 13th is going to be paid. So the accounts receivable is credited for the 20,100 that we established that accounts receivable at on November the 13th. We also charged them 8% interest until they paid us. They paid us 45 days later. So we took the amount of the accounts receivable and multiplied it by 8% times 45 days divided by 360. So we earned some additional interest from this customer. We earned $201 from November the 13th to December 28th. We charged them additional interest because they had an outstanding accounts receivable that they owed us. The accounts receivable amount of 20,100 that went away plus the interest is what we are receiving, which is the maturity value of that uh, account, basically, is 20,301. These two add together are how I got that amount. So the cash that we've received off of this transaction is $20,301. $201 of that was interest revenue from November the 13th to December the 28th. The other $100 was interest we have already accounted for. That was from October 14th to November the 13th. And so that's all that I want to talk to you about. Um, and we'll see you again another time. And we'll stop sharing this with you. Bye-bye.